Papa Francis dedicated his entire Sunday Angelus address to appealing for an immediate ceasefire in Ukraine. La guerra in se stessa è un errore e un orrore. The Holy Father expressed concern over the nuclear threat and military escalation in the war. He also deployed Russia's annexation, saying countries should respect territorial integrity and the rights of minorities. Joining us now from Rome is Andreas Tonhauser, EWTN Vatican Bureau Chief. Andreas, great to see you as always. Uh, can you tell us more about what the Pope said? Yeah, thank you, Tracy. Clear words indeed, I have to say. Pope Francis has always been outspoken about the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Several times now, he has called the conflict a world war. To him, this is not just confined to Russia and Ukraine, but also given the involvement of NATO and its member states, including the U.S., it really is a much bigger conflict. In his traditional address during the Angelus Prayer at St. Peter's Square, he urged for a quick end to the atrocities and that all parties return to negotiations. This was not dire only directed towards Russia, but also towards the Ukrainian president, Zelensky. The Pope urged him to be open to peace, because lately the Ukrainian government has made it clear that they do not trust Putin and will only negotiate with a new Russian president. But that's like pouring gasoline into an already difficult to control fire. And that's also the reason why it's so important for Pope Francis to intervene once more. My appeal is addressed first and foremost to the president of the Russian Federation, the pontiff said. And I quote, I implore him to stop the spiral of violence and death also for the sake of his people. Pope Francis also mentioned the nuclear threat that indeed the whole world is now facing because of this war. Because the risk of nuclear escalation, Tracy, is giving rise to fears of catastrophic consequences, as Pope Francis said. Andres, I'm curious, uh, what's the sentiment in Europe about this war in Ukraine? Well, I would say that people are not yet in panic, but yes, they are worried. With the newest sabotage, also what we've heard about uh, of the gas pipelines coming from Russia, it seems that not all countries will safely get over the winter. Putin does have a lot of influence here in Europe by controlling the gas supply, and almost every country is very much dependent on Russian gas. Winter is coming, and this will be especially a challenge for northern countries here in Europe. The pressure is growing with increasingly cold nights. And before I let you go, uh, really quickly, Andreas, uh, we heard that earlier today Apple CEO Tim Cook visited Pope Francis. What more can you tell us about that? Yeah, that's right, Tracy. The CEO of Apple, one of the most valuable companies in the world, had a private audience today with the Holy Father. What they share is the objection to the war in Ukraine. Cook also condemned the violent invasion of Ukraine and stopped offering Apple's goods and services in Russia. We do not know exactly what the meeting between Pope Francis and Cook uh, was about, and Cook is also famous for his support of LGBTQ rights, but uh, the U.S. CEO, it wasn't his first meeting with the Pope uh, in 2000, 2016, they already met together, but he's been in Italy uh, for a few days now to launch the first developer academy in Europe and to receive an honorary degree from the University Federico Duo in Naples. In his address to the students, he shared his excitement about the future of artificial intelligence technologies. Well, Andreas, thank you so much for that report. We appreciate it as always. Andreas Tonhauser, EWTN Vatican Bureau Chief. Thank you so much.